Hello and welcome to my channel Study History with Mr P and my GCSE History topic video about the Berlin Crisis of 1958 to 1963. This is sometimes referred to as the Second Berlin Crisis and it culminates in the building of the Berlin Wall but we need to trace its origins back much further than that. So we'll start our story with the refugee problem in Berlin in 1958 and again this had come about um, following the decision in 1948 to de essentially divide Germany into two countries, West Germany, the Democratic Part, and East Germany, which was under the control of the Soviet Union. After the decision to divide Germany into two separate countries, we saw that West Germany received martial aid and became a prosperous country during the 1950s, and most people, or certainly many people, enjoyed a higher standard of living. In contrast, East Germany received far less from the Soviet Union and so East Germans suffered from a low standard of living and shortages of basic goods. Equally, the communist regime in East Germany was unpopular, there, there were restrictions on what ordinary citizens could do and monitoring by the secret police. In 1953, there had been riots against the government in East Germany and the Soviet Union had sent in armed forces to restore order. Many East Germans chose to leave their home and move to West Germany where the quality of life was higher. It was easy to cross the border. All they had to do was travel from East to West Berlin. And once in West Berlin, so the western part of the city, they could then travel freely to other parts of the country. So by 1958, some three million East Germans over a sixth of the population had crossed from east to west and many of these were the skilled workers just the kind of people that east germany really needed to help them rebuild the economy but who could certainly earn much higher salaries in west germany the leader of the soviet union khrushchev could not allow this to happen valuable people were lost and it was bad propaganda for communism so remember the city of east berlin sat within the soviet um, controlled East Germany and in Berlin people therefore had a choice between capitalism and communism and it seemed that they were choosing capitalism. This leads to the Berlin ultimatum. So Khrushchev decided the answer was for the whole of Berlin to become part of East Germany and in November 1958 he demanded that the Western countries officially recognise East Germany as an independent country but they refused because they still ultimately believed that Germany should be united as a whole country. Therefore, on the 27th of November, Khrushchev issued what became known as the Berlin Ultimatum. This demanded that Berlin be demilitarised, that Western troops be withdrawn, and that Berlin became a free city. He then gave the West six months to make these changes, or, he said, control of all routes into Berlin would be handed to the East German government. This was a clever move because they would then have to talk to and recognise East Germany. The West of course was outraged by this and by Khrushchev's demands, seeing it as an attempt by the Soviet Union to spread communism. Khrushchev on the other hand saw his demands as essential to stopping the flood of skilled citizens from leaving East Germany. You need to remember that by 1958, both the USA and Soviet Union had large numbers of nuclear weapons, and neither side really wanted this crisis to lead to war. Therefore, between 1959 and 1961, there were a series of talks, to, known as summit meetings, to try to solve the Berlin problem. The first summit meeting was held in Geneva in May 1959. Foreign ministers from several countries met in Geneva, and proposals were made for how Berlin should be governed. No formal agreement was made, but Eisenhower invited Khrushchev to the USA for talks. These happened at Camp David for the second summit meeting in September 1959. Again, no agreement was made and no way forward was seen, but the Soviet Union did withdraw the Berlin ultimatum, and this appeared to establish a better working relationship between the heads of the two countries. Following on from this, though, was the Paris summit of May 1960. Now, on the eve of this meeting, the Soviet Union announced that it had shot down an American U-2 spy plane. The USA, of course, claimed it was a weather plane. 
that had blown off course, but the pilot, Gary Powers, had already admitted to being on a spy mission. President Eisenhower, though, refused to apologise and Khrushchev walked out and no decision was made. This led to the final summit meeting in Vienna in June 1961. By now, Kennedy was the new US president and Khrushchev thought he could take advantage of Kennedy's inexperience, but he was wrong. So although Khrushchev reissued the Berlin ultimatum, Kennedy said he would not give way on Berlin and so no decisions were made again. And Kennedy in turn increased US spending on armed forces by over $2 billion. So we now have the backdrop to the building of the Berlin Wall. We can recap that the causes were the USA realising it probably, sorry, the USSR realising it could not really win a nuclear war by this point, but that the country that it controlled, East Germany, saw an economy that was losing skilled labourers to the West because many people from East Germany had escaped to West Germany. Kennedy, as the new president of the USA, was refusing to back down over Berlin, and essentially Khrushchev had been forced to accept Western control of West Berlin. So what happened? Well, as tension grew, more East Germans crossed to the West in case Khrushchev decided to close the border. The leader of East Germany, Walter Ubrecht, urged Khrushchev to close the border. And on the night of the 12th of August 1961, East German troops built a barbed wire fence around Berlin and between East and West Berlin. Following on from this work began on a 165 kilometre concrete wall that kept Berlin and Germany split in two. It was actually two walls, one facing the East and the other facing the West, with, that was booby-trapped and a guarded no man's land in between. During and after the construction of the wall, many people tried to escape. The building of the wall had a number of consequences. Firstly, it did essentially solve the problem of the division of Berlin. It meant refugees were unable to leave East Germany, so it solved that problem for Khrushchev too. It meant Khrushchev had avoided war with the USA. It meant communism could survive in East Berlin. And equally, President Kennedy showed solidarity with the people of West Berlin.